Oxford Read and Discover, Level 6, Earth, Then and Now, by Robert Quinn, read by Becca Stewart, published in copyright Oxford University Press, 2011. Introduction Did you know that Earth formed billions of years ago? Our planet has changed a lot since then. The oceans and continents have moved. The plants and animals that we see today were not always here. Some are old and some are new. People are new too. Scientists say that we have only been here for about 200,000 years. How did Earth form? When did plants and animals first appear? Where did the first people live on Earth? How do oceans and continents move? What keeps Earth warm? Discover! Now read and discover more about Earth in the past and Earth today. Chapter 1. A Ball of Fire Scientists think that Earth is about 4.6 billion years old. Our planet started as an enormous ball of fire. How Earth Formed Scientists think that Earth formed from a cloud of gas, dust, and rock that was around our sun. These materials came together and formed a ball of fire and liquid rock. At that time, the temperature on Earth's surface was very hot, and nothing lived here. Discover! The Great Pyramid in Egypt is about 4,600 years old. Earth is one million times older than that. Earth's Layers After millions of years, Earth cooled down. The surface became a layer of solid rock, called the crust. This is the part of Earth that we live on. The crust is usually about 30 kilometers thick on land but it's thinner at the bottom of the ocean. Under Earth's crust, there's a layer called the mantle. It's about 2,900 kilometers thick. The mantle is very hot. Its temperature is about 3,000 degrees centigrade. It's mostly made of liquid rock, called magma. Earth's core is under the mantle, at the center of the planet. The core is about 3,500 kilometers across, and it's mostly made of two metals, iron and nickel. The outer core is liquid, but the inner core is solid. That's because the other layers push down on the inner core with incredible pressure. Temperatures in the inner core can be more than 6,000 degrees centigrade. Mountains of Fire there's a lot of heat in Earth's core and mantle. We can see some of this heat when volcanoes erupt and produce lava. In some parts of Earth's crust, magma forms underground pools called magma chambers. When there's a lot of magma in a chamber, the magma moves up a tunnel to the surface. When the magma gets to Earth's surface, it's called lava. The lava comes out of holes called vents. Some volcanoes also produce lots of gas and ash. The lava and the ash can sometimes form a tall cone. Discover! In 2010, a volcano in Iceland erupted and produced big clouds of ash. Planes couldn't fly through the ash, so thousands of people couldn't travel. Underwater Volcanoes Sometimes volcanic vents form under the ocean. When this happens, the lava cools very quickly and makes round shapes, called pillow lava. Underwater lava can also build up and form volcanic islands, like Iceland or Hawaii. One of the newest volcanic islands on our planet is Hunga Ha'apai, near Tonga in the Pacific Ocean. This island appeared after a big underwater eruption in 2009. Chapter 2. 
Water and Air Today, water covers about 70% of our planet. Billions of years ago, Earth's surface was dry and nothing lived here. Earth's atmosphere was also different. It had lots of carbon dioxide and other gases, but no oxygen. How the Oceans Formed At first, there wasn't any liquid water on Earth's surface, but there was lots of water vapor in the atmosphere. This water vapor came from inside the planet when volcanoes erupted. When Earth cooled down, the water vapor condensed and formed clouds in the sky. Then it started to rain. After millions of years, liquid water covered most of our planet's surface. Discover! Some of our planet's water came from millions of icy meteorites. When the meteorites entered Earth's atmosphere, the ice heated up and changed to water vapor. Oxygen About three billion years ago, something amazing happened. Living things appeared on Earth. Some of the first living things were tiny blue-green bacteria. These bacteria grew in shallow pools of warm water, and we can find their fossils today. The fossils look like rocks with unusual shapes, and they're called stromatolites. Blue-green bacteria use sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to make their own food, like plants do today. The blue-green bacteria also produced oxygen, and after millions of years, there was lots of oxygen in Earth's oceans and atmosphere. Today, the air that we breathe is about 21% oxygen. We couldn't live without it. Salt water Today, the water in our oceans and seas is about 3.5% salt. Do you know why? When rain falls on land, some of it goes into lakes and rivers, and then into the oceans. As the water moves, it picks up salt from the ground. When the water goes into the ocean, it carries this salt with it. After many millions of years, this has made our ocean salty. Some lakes can be very salty, like Lake Asal in Djibouti in Africa. In this lake, the water is more than 35% salt, and no plants or animals can live there. The salt water comes from underground hot springs. When the hot water evaporates into the air, it leaves the salt in the lake. Fresh water Only 3% of Earth's water is fresh water. About 69% of this fresh water is frozen in polar ice, snow, and glaciers. About 30% is in underground caves and aquifers, between the rocks of Earth's crust. The other 1% is on the surface, in rivers and lakes. One of the largest aquifers in the world is the Guarani Aquifer in South America. It covers about 1,200,000 square kilometers under Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, and Uruguay. In this aquifer, there are about 50,000 cubic kilometers of water. That's about two times the water in all the Great Lakes in North America. Discover! Scientists say that there's enough water in the Guarani Aquifer for everyone in the world to drink for 200 years. Chapter 3. Minerals and Rock Earth's crust is solid rock that's made of minerals. There are three types of rock. Igneous rock, sedimentary rock, and metamorphic rock. Do you know how they form? Minerals Rock is made of minerals that form crystals. Some types of rock, like granite, have small crystals. We can see their different colors. In other types of rock, like amethyst, the crystals are bigger and easier to see. Discover! Some crystals, like amethyst, form in holes inside other rocks. Rocks with crystals inside are called geodes. 
Igneous rock. Igneous rock forms when hot magma and lava cool down and become solid. Some examples are granite, pumice, and obsidian. Pumice is very light because it forms from lava that has lots of tiny air bubbles in it. Did you know that pumice can float on water? Obsidian is very different. It's heavy volcanic rock, and it doesn't float. When igneous rock forms, it can create unusual shapes. The Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland is an example. It formed during volcanic eruptions more than 60 million years ago. When the lava cooled down, it became a type of igneous rock called basalt. Then the basalt broke into about 40,000 tall columns. Now they look like giant stairs. Sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock is made of sediment, tiny pieces of rock, sand, and other materials. This sediment often forms layers at the bottom of rivers, lakes, and oceans. When there's a lot of sediment, the top layers push down on the bottom layers. This pressure slowly changes the sediment into solid rock. For example, limestone, sandstone, and shale form in this way. Sedimentary rock is interesting because it can tell us about Earth's past. Scientists often find fossils of dead plants and animals between the different layers of sediment. Discover. One of the best places for finding fossils is the Burgess Shale Fossil Field in Canada. Some of the fossils are more than 500 million years old. Metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock is sedimentary rock or igneous rock that has changed because of lots of heat and pressure. This happens deep inside Earth, where there's heat from magma and lots of pressure from the rock above. For example, limestone changes into marble that's good for making statues. Shale changes into slate that's good for making roof tiles. Granite changes into a very hard rock called gneiss that's good for making buildings. The rock cycle. Rock can change in different ways. Sedimentary rock and igneous rock can change into metamorphic rock when there's lots of heat. And pressure, metamorphic rock and sedimentary rock can melt and become magma. Then the magma cools down and becomes igneous rock. Water and wind can cause erosion. They break igneous rock and metamorphic rock into tiny pieces. Then these pieces form new layers of sedimentary rock. Chapter four. Tectonic plates. About 1.1 billion years ago, most of the land on Earth formed a giant continent called Rodinia. Today, the land is divided into smaller continents with seas and oceans between them. How did this happen? Moving plates. Earth's crust is divided into enormous pieces called tectonic plates. These plates fit together like a puzzle, and they float on the magma in Earth's mantle. Tectonic plates also move around, about 10 centimeters every year. That doesn't sound like much, but in a million years, a tectonic plate can move about 100 kilometers. That's how Rodinia changed to form the continents that we know today. When tectonic plates meet. Some tectonic plates meet and then push together. One plate can push the other plate down into Earth's mantle, where it melts and changes into magma. Sometimes, two tectonic plates meet and push each other up to create new mountains. This is how the Andes Mountains formed in South America. The Andes Mountains are quite new; they're only about 76 million years old. Discover. The highest mountain in the Andes is Mount Aconcagua in Argentina. It's six thousand nine hundred sixty-two meters high. Folds and rifts. 
Did you know that Earth's crust can bend and fold? This happens when tectonic plates push together very slowly and for a very long time. We sometimes see these folds in the sides of hills and mountains. When tectonic plates push together too hard or too quickly, they break into large blocks of rock that can move up, down, or to the side. Sometimes, tectonic plates also move away from each other and make a long opening called a rift. When Earth's crust moves or breaks very suddenly, it can cause earthquakes. If an earthquake happens underwater, it can make a giant wave called a tsunami. Discover! One of the longest rifts is the Great Rift Valley in East Africa. It's about 6,400 kilometers long, and it's up to 100 kilometers wide in some places. Ocean Rifts Rift valleys can form at the bottom of Earth's oceans. When this happens, magma escapes from Earth's mantle and new crust forms on both sides of the rift. The new crust also pushes older crust to the sides. This is how tectonic plates grow bigger and move around. Mountains can also form along rifts under oceans. For example, the Mid-Atlantic Rift goes down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, from the Arctic to Antarctica. It's about 10,000 kilometers long. There are many underwater mountains on both sides of the rift. Chapter 5. Plant Life The first plants on Earth lived in the ocean. Then, plants started growing on land, too. Today, scientists have named more than 300,000 different species of plants around the world, and they are discovering more species every year. The First Land Plants The first land plants appeared more than 450 million years ago. They were non-seed plants, like mosses, that grew in cool places near water. These plants didn't have leaves, and they didn't produce seeds. They reproduced by growing spore capsules with lots of tiny spores inside. More than 300 million years ago, the first ferns appeared. They had long leaves called fronds with spore capsules on them. Today, there are more than 12,000 types of fern around the world. Seeds and Cones Earth's first seed plants were conifers that appeared about 290 million years ago. These new plants grew their seeds inside cones to keep them safe. They also had tall trunks, long branches, and lots of thin needles. Soon, conifers started growing in many parts of the world. They were taller than ferns, so they got more sunlight. Discover! The oldest and tallest living things on Earth today are conifers. Some bristlecone pine trees are more than 4,500 years old, and some redwood trees are more than 100 meters tall. Flowering Plants About 140 million years ago, the first flowering plants appeared. These plants didn't reproduce by growing cones. They produced flowers. First, the wind and insects pollinated the flowers, and the flowers became fruit with seeds inside. Then, animals ate the fruit and carried the seeds to new places. Finally, new plants grew from those seeds. Today, about 80% of the plants on Earth are flowering plants. Some of these plants give us food, like rice, vegetables, and of course, fruit. Flowering plants also give us other products, like cotton and rubber. Discover! Scientists have found fossil flowers in very old rocks. Some of them are more than 180 million years old. Forests Today, about 30% of Earth's surface is covered by forests. In cold climates, most of the trees are conifers that stay green all year long, 
In warmer climates, there are deciduous trees that grow new leaves in spring. Then they lose the leaves in fall. In hot climates, there are often tropical rainforests with many different types of plants. In rainforests, the tallest trees form the canopy at the top, where there's lots of sunlight. Under the canopy, there are younger trees and lots of smaller plants like ferns and mosses. Rainforests are very important because the plants there produce lots of oxygen. Scientists can also make medicines from many plants that grow in rainforests. Discover! The biggest tropical rainforest is the Amazon rainforest in South America. Chapter 6 Animal Life The first animals appeared in the ocean more than 700 million years ago. They were very simple living things, like comb jellies. All the animals that we see today, in water and on land, evolved from these ocean animals. Early Invertebrates For many millions of years, the only animals on Earth were invertebrates, animals with no backbone. Some of them had a hard cover or a shell that protected them. There are many types of invertebrate on Earth today. Some of them, like crabs and jellyfish, live in water. Others, like insects, live on land. Discover! In the Cambrian period, about 540 million years ago, many new animals appeared in Earth's oceans. Scientists call this the Cambrian Explosion. Fish and Amphibians The first fish appeared about 510 million years ago. They were Earth's first vertebrates, animals with a backbone. Today, there are about 24,000 different types of fish. All of them have gills to take oxygen from water. Most of them also have fins and a tail to help them to swim. Scientists think that amphibians evolved from fish that lived in shallow water. About 400 million years ago, amphibians became the first vertebrates that lived on land and walked on legs. Young amphibians have gills, but then they grow lungs so that they can breathe air. There are more than 4,000 species of amphibian today, like frogs, toads, and salamanders. Reptiles and birds Reptiles are different from amphibians because they can stay on land all the time. They have scales to protect their skin so that it doesn't get dry. Reptiles first appeared about 320 million years ago. They probably looked like small lizards. The most famous reptiles in history are the dinosaurs. They lived on Earth for about 150 million years before they became extinct. Today, we can see many types of reptiles, like crocodiles, snakes, lizards, and turtles. Some scientists believe that the first birds evolved from reptiles. There are fossils of dinosaurs, like microraptors, that had feathers. Today, there are many types of bird, and most of them can fly. Some birds, like penguins and ostriches, have wings, but they can't fly. Discover! One of the first birds was the Archaeopteryx. It lived about 150 million years ago. Mammals Mammals are the only animals that give birth to their young. They don't lay eggs like fish, amphibians, reptiles, or birds do. Mammal mothers are special because they produce milk for their babies to drink. Scientists think that early mammals evolved from small reptiles, like lizards, about 250 million years ago. When the dinosaurs became extinct, more mammals appeared. Later, mammals also became larger and more intelligent. Today, we can find many different types of mammal. Some live on land, like horses, 
camels, and monkeys. Others live in the ocean, like whales and dolphins. Bats are special because they are the only mammals that can fly. Did you know that you are a mammal too? Chapter Seven, Temperature. Earth's temperature has changed many times in the past. There have been very cold times when large areas of land were covered with ice. There have also been times when Earth's climate was very warm and tropical. Ice ages. During ice ages, Earth's temperature is very cold for a long time. Winters become colder and longer, and large glaciers form, especially at Earth's poles. This happens because the poles get less sunlight than other places on Earth. Glaciers reflect lots of sunlight into space, which makes Earth's temperature much colder. The last ice age ended more than ten thousand years ago. Glaciers. Glaciers form slowly, but they can become very big. The world's largest glacier is the Lambert Glacier in Antarctica. It's about five hundred kilometers long, eighty kilometers wide, and two point five kilometers deep. This glacier moves about six hundred meters every year. When glaciers move, they cut long valleys called glacial valleys in the ground. Glaciers carry materials like rocks and soil with them. When glaciers melt and disappear, these materials form long hills called moraines. Some glacial valleys form on coasts. The ice moves down to the ocean, and big pieces fall into the water. This is how many icebergs form. When the ocean fills a glacial valley, it's called a fjord. The greenhouse effect. Earth gets heat from the sun. Some of this heat escapes into space, and some is trapped by gases like carbon dioxide and methane. This is called the greenhouse effect because it works like a greenhouse. The greenhouse effect is important because it keeps Earth warm enough for us to live here. Greenhouse periods. Very warm periods in Earth's history are called greenhouse periods. Plants grow very well during greenhouse periods because it's warm and there's more carbon dioxide for plants to make their food. During some greenhouse periods in the past, there were tropical plants in Antarctica. During greenhouse periods, glaciers start to melt and they get smaller. So they can't reflect a lot of sunlight back into space. This makes Earth's temperature warmer. The water that comes from glaciers makes sea levels go up, and this can cause floods along coasts. The land gets warmer during greenhouse periods too. In the Arctic, there's a lot of methane in the frozen soil. When the soil gets warmer, methane comes out of the soil and goes into the atmosphere. This increases the greenhouse effect. And Earth gets warmer more quickly. Chapter Eight: People on Earth. About two hundred thousand years ago, early people only lived in Africa. Today, almost seven billion people live all over Earth. People have changed our planet in many ways. What have people changed? Some places on Earth haven't changed very much. They are natural areas like rainforests and national parks. Natural areas are important because they are homes for many plants and animals. We need to care for these areas so that plants and animals can live there in the future. In other areas, people have changed many things. In rural areas, farmers have cut down trees. And they have cleared land to grow crops for people to eat. In urban areas like towns and cities, people have built lots of homes and other buildings. They have also built roads, bridges, and tunnels. Natural resources. Earth gives us lots of resources like food and other products from plants and animals. It also gives us water to drink and air to breathe. 
these natural resources are renewable. They replace themselves naturally. We can get more of these resources, but we need to share them with other people. In some parts of the world, people don't have enough food or enough clean water. Earth also gives us mineral resources, like metals, that we use to make products in factories. We burn fossil fuels like oil, coal, and gas to produce energy. These resources are non renewable. We can't get any more, so we need to use them carefully. Discover! We can get renewable energy from the sun, the wind, and moving water. Waste and pollution. We throw away too much waste, and this is bad for our planet. We need to reduce the amount of waste that we produce. We can recycle more things like paper, plastic, glass, and metal. Our cars and factories produce smoke that pollutes the air. In some cities, it can be difficult to breathe because there's so much pollution in the air. Some factories pollute our water and soil. We should build more modern factories that don't produce so much pollution. Global warming. Scientists think that a new greenhouse period is starting. Earth is getting warmer, and many glaciers are melting, like the ones on Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. Why is this happening? For the last 150 years, People have burned lots of fossil fuels, and this makes gases like carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is increasing the natural greenhouse effect and making Earth warmer. This is called global warming. We need to produce less carbon dioxide. We also need to protect our forests and plant new trees. Trees use carbon dioxide and slow down global warming. Caring for our planet. We live on a beautiful planet that has been here for billions of years. Earth gives us everything that we need to live. Now we need to care for our planet so that our children and our grandchildren can enjoy it in the future too.